बारे वोट नहीं होगा ऐसा भी विनर सर 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 बेटा हाँ मेरा बना कम आ बने पस सर सर हम बने सिंस सर का आ ना बट आ सर ओके ओके Hello, Professor. Good afternoon. Yeah, very good afternoon. Ah, uh, better. Sir, Benison sir, sir, the camera is pressing. Sir, our camera is not pressing. Benison sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Ah, I have heard this. I have heard this. I have heard this. Are you all okay? Yeah, yeah. No pressing. I have audio only pressing. I am not. No, sir. my voice here. Okay. Unfortunately, the camera has gone off. 
ஒரு <laughs> 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 Sir, uh, I just let him. Yes, ma'am, I got it. You know, power powering a bridge. bridge. அதான் <laughs> 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 சார் 5 मिनिट्सல ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணிப்போம் சார் ப்ரீ நான் இட்ஸ் ஓகே மே ஓகே ஓகே ஐ வில் பீ டிகி ஆப் பேப்பர் ஆப் பேப்பர் in the meantime uh, dr kutty we can ask the participants to introduce themselves here if too many yes, have sir. come you if too many have come into the scene <laughs> the time we will mute them okay okay i can't good afternoon one and all present here so we are to start our um, conference now uh, we have with us venison sir and uh, venera sir our chief guest um, participants please mute yourselves please thank you uh, it, it would be nice if uh, you know by the meantime we, it, we have more 10 minutes uh, if uh, uh, anybody willing you can introduce yourself so that we could have a nice contact so you can introduce i know few people over here let's start with abigail anita ma'am Uh, friends if you hesitate to open your mo- uh, mic and speak please introduce yourself from the chat box please yeah i have given uh, a youtube link so you can share with your friends uh, also Why Dr. Christie's people hesitate to introduce? Sir, but you know, we have participants who have presented their papers and indeed we have Dr. good Christie, presentation as well. 
I can hear you, sir. I'm speaking as well. Benison, sir. I'm speaking. Hello, Dr. Christie. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, Benison, sir. I can be on Thank your you line too. I don't hear you. The problem is that uh, you speak. I, I, I'll call you. I'll call you. Online. How are you? Well, since so you can hear me from here, okay. Participants, please do introduce yourselves in the chat box. It will be good if you can introduce the place from where you are what you are doing. If you are a research scholar, please mention. If you are a teacher, kindly mention that also. And from which university you have joined here? Which part of this country or which part of the world? Thank you. So many are coming in. I think they are introducing through a message.
Um, participants, please mute your mute your Zoom, please. Come on, man. Come on. So we'll start now. Good afternoon, Wonderlog present here. We have to start the conference now. First of all, I would like to uh, say a big thank you for Lord Almighty give, for giving us this opportunity to have an international webinar mm -hmm. on gender, war, and memory. So we've been thinking about for quite some time that we need to have some challenging topic. Uh, so uh, it was a right scenario where we were talking about COVID on uh, uh, bio war, you know, China was waging a bio war all over the world and the economy was falling down. And we're also having war now. Uh, mm -hmm. When we see uh, uh, around us now, uh, now with present scenario, when we talk about Russia, Ukraine, we are having war. But this has been uh, not only doing, uh, we are not yeah. only coming across gender or war or memory now. We've been long. Uh, uh, please mute your audios, please. Uh, we've been quite some time dealing with all these problems uh, before also. And hence, we thought of uh, doing this particular topic now so that we would have an insight. You know, when we were talking about research 
or when we are talking about more confidence ideas, this would be appropriate topic so that we can have delve deep into that particular literature or that particular area of study so that uh, uh, we can we can give some uh, uh, goodness to the power of society as well. So um, uh, I would also like to thank Dr. Benison sir, Vinara sir, and Anuradha ma'am for being a part of this conference. You know, they've been supporting me and they are my well wishes as well. And uh, there are people who uh, are not for anything. They are very much knowledgeable people. And um, uh, I came across them uh, quite some time. I've been working with them. Um, and I'm very much honored to thank each and every one of them and also to welcome as well for thanking for accepting my invitation and welcoming them for being a part of this webinar. I welcome Benison sir. Uh, Vinara sir, at this moment, um, I uh, now I, I would like to take uh, take my time to welcome Dr. Benison sir. Um, Benison sir has been uh, one of my uh, you know I have been uh, known I've been knowing him for quite a long time, and he is a godfather uh, to me, and uh, he is uh, uh, a wide knowledgeable person, a very, very humble person. And uh, and I, I'm very much honored to welcome, you know, there are not few words cannot uh, explain him or uh, he is uh, uh, someone who is very much great person. Uh, he, whenever I call him, you know, he's part of my conference every time, whenever I call him, he will be very much uh, okay. He will never say no. He will not talk about his time. He will say, whenever you call me, I'll be there. So thank you, Benison, sir. Thank you for being with me here and for supporting me. You know, Benison, sir, is one of the reasons for what I am today. He is. He has molded me so much. And thank you so much, Benison, sir. Uh, and also, I'd like to thank his wife as well, because she's also part of him and part of my uh, boosting up my career as well. Um, I welcome you, sir. Benison, sir, over to you now. Thank you, Dr. Christy. Good afternoon, everyone. Christy, can you, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, uh, sir. Just give me not. I could understand from your lips you were saying about uh, about me because that is I, on my side. The video has gone out of uh, order, and the audio also very very poor. So to some extent, I could understand what you were saying. But good afternoon, everyone here, dear professors, research scholars, budding research scholars, students, everyone. Very warm greetings to you. This is a beautiful topic. That's what I understand. When I was asked to say a few words about this program, I was thinking about these three words. Number one is the first one, as you know, the war, the war, uh, the memory, and then uh, the third one, See, there is some problem on my, it distracts me, excuse me, just a minute, it, it, it distracts me, just a minute, just a minute, please. Let me set it right. Chris, can you hear me? Is it all right? Hello, Chris? I can hear you, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Something, something has gone wrong with this. I must check it up. I must repair this laptop. Okay. The first one is war. Then the second one is, I'm sorry, gender, war, and memory. The gender issue has been there right from the beginning of the creation. Male, female. We can see that very much, whether it is in the, among the human beings or among the birds or animals, it is still there. The only thing is people talk more about the sufferings of women folks. I don't know how many of us would come out to say or to 
to share openly the sufferings of men in the hands of the other soon in, through literature. Well, that is one part. So when there is, when there is more than one, when there is a group, there is always a war. War within and war out. War is always found to be a common phenomena in everywhere. War towards constructive processes, war towards destructive processes. It's everywhere. War is a common thing. These two things we have seen in every part of literature. War in ethics, war in classics, war in epics, war in every war, 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 war. It is openly said or it is indirectly or imbibed in certain people. That's right. That's right. The third one is memory. And this is the recent study where people have been attracted towards this term memory, uh, <laughs> recalling the past, and many other things. Memory has always been a subject of fascination. It has always been a subject of fascination, not only for the poets, the artists, philosophers, and historians. It is a subject of fascination for every individual. A little child would remember certain things till the end. Memory is still there. So when recalling the past, we should understand that it is impossible to fully capture the complexity of memory. Yes, it is always there. Some people are very much gifted with the memory. They, they are able to reproduce what you have read word by word. But there is always a complexity, a complex form in memory. But at the same time, includes what is forgotten. Forgetfulness is a gift. Forgetfulness is a gift. If we trace the history, in the beginning, we had only the oral literature. Literature was recorded from generation to generation in the form of uh, passing on to the oral performance. Even the Holy Bible was done in that way. All the first five books were done in that way. So remembrance, it includes certain things which are very, very much appreciable. But at the same time, it is, it is a forgotten one. Nowadays, we very much depend on machines. Even for four into four, you might have seen people going to the calculator to do the calculation. See, those things have gone in those days. People came, people said the tables from their memory. So remembrance, memory, they are closely associated with each other. Sometimes forgetfulness is deliberate or sometimes it is accident. It is accident. But forgetfulness, on the other hand, plays a very important role in our life. Well, that's what I understand. Forgetfulness helps us to understand, helps us to forget the bitter things. Sometimes we forget even the good things. But past events are remembered or misremembered or understood or contested or forgotten based on the ability of the mental ability of a particular person. When it comes to the part of literature, a great man, Andreas Huizen, has recently pronounced that. Contemporary Western culture is obsessed with the issue of memory. True it is. Now, these are the days when we talk about the memory culture, we talk about the memory literature, we talk about the memory related areas, very much even in literature. So, but Andreas Hughes says, Western culture is obsessed with the issue of memory because there are so many things which are still alive in the hearts of the people, in the war-torn countries, in the war-torn areas, in the war-torn regions. People remember the bad things, the bitter things, the hatredness in their mind, and they pass on one from the other generation, from one to the other generation. But when it comes to the part of literature, all things are registered mm -hmm. in general. When it comes to the part of art, it is remembered through the memory or the or through the record of literary things. When it comes to the part of collective memory, it is crucial because for identifying the formation and how particularly in the modern period, the self-reflexive cultivation, the collective memory is based on self-reflexive cultivation 
and that self reflexive cultivation of the past is always in the form of a formal one many a time they forget the importance of imagination the collective memory is based on in based on the formal way of representing ideas representing areas representing events so now we are here to listen to two great people one is professor vinaras nityanandam who has joined us this afternoon from iraq he is the professor you will you he will be introduced by dr christy more and he is here to enlighten us more on gender war and memory joining him dr anuradha she is head of the department and assistant professor of history what a beautiful combination it is literature and history though history is part of literature everything is based on memory everything is based on war within and war out everything is based on some issue but in this conference in this webinar these three are combined together to throw light on a very different interesting areas we should appreciate bishop caldwell college from the name bishop caldwell itself from the phrase you can understand that this college was established it was established in the name of bishop caldwell who came down to south to turtikar in tenavali madras and so many other parts and who learned tamil language he is the one who first wrote grammar book an english man a native speaker came down to south he learned tamil language and he is the one who first wrote the tamil grammar book so from this college the department of english and the department of history they both together have organized this one day international webinar so let's all appreciate him hats off to dr christy who has taken a lot of pain in making this program a possible one over to dr christy welcome again my friends be with us god bless you all thank you so much thank you benison sir thank you so much for the wonderful word and wonderful uh, you know what we were talking about about the conference uh, sir has indeed put in a nutshell and uh, and uh, apart from english and history department there were many paper presenters from the department of psychology where they were talking about memory as well and um, when we got uh, a lot of papers on gender war and memory we think this conference has achieved its level and i thank the participants as well as sir said um, and now it's time for our uh, our uh, chief guest to present his first uh, talk uh, may i now request uh, ms divya or Depart assistant professor department of english bishop colwell college to introduce our chief guest divya I think the via lost her line um um so i now re uh, present uh, uh, introduce uh, dr vinaras nityanandam sir uh, he is at present professor in education lebanese uh, french university uh, kurdistan iraq sir has done his uh, phd at baronmum sudanar university in education and um, uh, i would uh, like to put a word that sir is a very extensive researcher and he has uh, apart from uh, 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 quite a lot of number of teaching and training experiences he has an expertise in educational psychology research methodology methodology of teaching and learning and uh, and he is a person well versed in guidance and counseling 
and he is also a person who has written an empty number of journals in uh, uh, social science citation indexed journals and uh, uh, sir when i when i look through his profile you know his publication runs to three to four pages and it, uh, they are uh, they all those journals have very good impact factors and also um, where journals have given him uh, and uh, waived off his fee as well because of the quality of the paper that which he has and um, at this time uh, when uh, each and every one of us in this literature are lagging behind the research uh, we uh, i i wanted vinara sir to come into our uh, group of uh, research scholars and assistant professors so that he uh, you know we can learn a lot from him because he is and very much extensive research and he has in a short span of time i would say when i talk to him over the phone regarding any research or any 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 questions about uh, papers uh, he gives a lot of ideas um, who he has given us a lot of information about how to present a paper how to write a research paper and how to bring about a topic all that and uh, i i have to put this word because he is a person uh, not only for words he is a person he is a man of words as well uh, thank you thank you so much vinara sir for being with us and he is a very good nice friend of mine also um, you know he is uh, he is like benison sir whenever i asked and he didn't say he didn't check his calendar and he was telling me ma'am this time is busy no he was very, he's a very busy person but even then he has uh, given us a consent to uh, be the chief guest of the day thank you so much vinara sir over to you sir yeah thank you very much ma'am um <clears throat> so whatever they said about my cv <laughs> it's okay thank you for <laughs> everything okay first of all i thank the bishop caldwell college the department of english and department of uh, history Company organized here one day international webinar about gender, war, and memory, and interdisciplinary approach. I thank uh, Dr. Benson, and after my speech, the another uh, resource person, Dr. Anuradha, and other the members and the principal and secretary and the co-ord organizers of this webinar. I am really thank to them. I gave a wonderful opportunity to present today. um actually today i'll go to present about not like uh, only for the gender war and everything this is everybody knows we are uh, learning through or we are listening through the media so i would like to share something which we are lack in this for example particularly uh, just i will share my slide then i will just a minute ma'am can you give the permission to share my slide yes i have you can share yeah i think is it visible for you all of you yes it is visible yeah thank you yes the uh, first of all uh, i i i thanked already so today i'll go to give my wonderful experience what i feel particularly we have to know this is one of the theme of the conference this workshop also sorry this webinar also that is global inequality we all are educators but we never or we couldn't find there is a inequality in globalized concern particularly in the field of education because now i am a, uh, a professor working in iraq so when i worked in india now in iraq i found lot of differences so when you think about the globalized way we have to find we have to know we have to analyze why there is a inequality in global form if you take about business is yes, there is if you take about technology there is 
if you take about any other field even marketing or tourism everything there is inequality but in globalized form even that uh, world health organization and unicef everybody they said about there is no inequality in education every country should concentrate on their they have to follow some their own policy and principles even though we are feeling now we are in feel first i like to ask some questions to the participants my question is do you think there is an equality in education do you think there is an equality in education all over the world then question number 2 do you get an equal opportunity on education where you live maybe in different country or different city or different place then question number 3 what are the difficulties facing in your life due to inequality of educational system so these three questions i am sharing to you kindly give some response or few response any participants do you think there is any equality in education all over the world then do you get any equal opportunity on education where you live then what are the difficulties facing in your life due to inequality of educational system okay there is no response from the participants okay even we know about we have lot of issues in this okay somebody they text is giving the in the text we have lot of issues definitely yes i agree on this when you think about the issue basically just i start with what is the meaning of education because everyone knows about knowledge values skills critical thinking problem solving and creativity when we gather or learn this knowledge that process is called education the education is a lifelong process it's not or finish or end within a day or within a month or within a year so it's a lifelong process we know everyone At the same time i like to share that photo just you can see equality doesn't mean to give a justice think about this two photo is a very familiar photo everybody knows about this this is a equality the first picture which we are following at present even in the book even in our system even in our lifestyle but actually what is the justice everyone should get everything that is equality we can say in another way like liberty or liberal consequence but these things only following in our education system all over the world the same message i am giving in another way like the image on the right is equality if the big guy gave his box because he thought it was the fire to do but we need not only equality we need equity so that's why i think when i was in india i found some equity in education some revolution some process they have started there over but i hope so no one get it properly about that what it is if the big guy was ordered to give the little guy by the box so we can get equity why in the first image it is assumed that everyone will benefit from the same support they are being treated equally but in the second image individuals are given different supports to make it possible for them to have equal access to the game they are treated equ equitably but 
in the third image all three can see the game without any support and accommodations because the cause of the inequality was addressed the systematic barrier has been removed there is no system for any focusing or something like that so everybody can see everything is in open forum for all so equal the education and inequality when you think about this concept how do we define inequality in education if you go for education the income for example inequality earning income we are getting education depends upon the money we decide where we have to study how much we can study we can see in the world many places many dropouts from school many dropouts just to graduate many dropouts only masters they are able to study more than that the inequality of opportunities is yes, to access and life chances they are able to get proper position proper job then political inequality the power and relations then social inequality due to their class distinction race distinction gender distinction and linguistic distinction not only this religious distinction even also there lot of issues how we can solve these things how it is influenced in education and other aspects equality and equity equality like shameless in terms of resources opportunities services treatment and rewards but equality in education the same as in terms of access to education and uniform distribution of educational opportunities freedom to develop personal ability and make choices irrespective of differences of behavior aspiration and needs where there is a equality no stereotype and rigid gender role and prejudice that limit a student to perform at his or her full fullest potential where we can follow the equality and equity we can see all the things we can see all the things so you can see this a diagram equality in education what we expect the present people in our life they expect equality in education involves quality of teaching we know about where we are getting the quality of teaching the teacher student ratio if you go for some schools some colleges some other places the teachers are very less but students are more we are lack in that then expenditure on children's education even the government giving scholarship even they give how much people they are getting good education or proper education then library and other educational resources where is the library nowadays now we are using digital library everything everybody can access even we know now many student they don't have a like a smartphone to learn or to search something for them they have to borrow somebody only then examination system many type of examination system many type of uh, assumption like sorry like assessment systems which is a correct one which is giving a correct assessment then selection criteria how they are selecting for the quality or for the job or for giving the courses then length of schooling now you see how long we have a school sometimes short sometimes long how much we are getting from the school everything we have to keep on concern when you think about equity it broad in four kind of concept number one we are telling every time but what is the governance what is the community and family engagement on the equity what is the development among the educators what is the high quality of education we prefer so everything we have where in the book in the report in the file it is implemented it has reached all over the world 
it has reached all the people this is the problem we unable to equate the education system for everyone we can find lot of inequality or inequity for example instructional inequality the teachers would often teach for a goal of passing a test instead of teaching the students to retain the information it's going on nowadays staff inequality the teachers would often leave the school in order to have better opportunity and better compensation at the school all our teachers they are getting equal salary no they are getting equal opportunity no the program at inequity teachers would often show favoritism towards the students resulting in other students feeling more unnoticed in the class this also that's a teacher we are doing in the class in our among the students then social inequity there were problems with the race and uh, like a protesting that often resulted with the school on the news we can find many thing in everywhere how we can come out from this we are telling about global inequality what where and how and what is the solution due to this reason only we are getting this inequality in globalized way number one political goals because all the people ruled and their uh, life or emotion everybody decided by the political people their goal only achieve if they say yes yes if they say no no yes even they can say come corona they will it will come go corona it will go it may be happen like that then exploitation of poor countries now you can find many countries are suffering due to war due to poverty due to economic crisis i don't want to say now you know the problem between uh, russia and ukraine not only there many neighbor small small countries they are fighting together then tax avoidance we have to pay tax for everything if you touch anything you have to pay all the taxes then lack of education and lack of innovation we are telling innovated innovated how many innovation reached to the bottom of the people it reached only the high level people you can see that inequality the insecurity regarding property rights how many people they can get their property permanently no low investment in cycle in the forms low living equality regional factors even war our theme due to war we are getting lot of who is the big who is the ruler who is authority then inequality in feminism consumption of the behavior are natural disasters it leads some effects in the global wise health wise social tension increased probability for conflict frustration to everyone drug abuses crime poverty starvation lack lack of access to education yes i am coming to that point only bad work conditions and terrorism what will be the solution what we have to do just i am telling some solution better access to education education is the soul or tool to change everything then been financial substance every country telling about we are poor poor we know we have a bank why we are not doing where is the money where it has gone create incentive for farms to locate to poor areas increase incentive for innovation worldwide support we have to get global wealth tax improve works rights establish minimum wages increasing national stability level improve trade policies change commercial behavior and convince others so for everything we need better access to education that is a better solution when you think about 
the reason for inequality i said already the political stability because we have a lot of civil conflict wherever you go if you go to india if you go to africa if you go to america if you go to uk if you go to russia everywhere is there then saving and investment where we have good money or much money sometimes the government bank telling something they are take, taking from the people they are not giving to the people we had a doubt nowadays then economic system the value of the worth of the goods we buy we are paying money we get the worthy goods they are telling is a warranty or guarantee still many people they don't know what is guarantee what is warranty how they are cheated by the customers because they are showing inequality who is earning money only the rich people only the people those who are in the higher community the natural resources moreover we are disastrous uh, natural resources for making more we never save that also making another reason then geographical location we are fighting for which is our part of the country which is another part of the country then working culture now we everything changed for working we are working from home we are not physically working so everything changed these are the reason we found we came to know there is global inequality among the people when you want to get the equity we need three major consequence or concept we have to follow a healthy complex identities then respect across differences then notice the name and the bias so when you come out from this we can get the circle of empathy and understanding we can get good empathy and good understanding everyone then responsiveness and action we all are responsible for everything how many people being a responsible citizen for every nation is a great question mark we could think about educational equity it depends on recognition yes we need recognize whatever we do everything accepted by everyone they are finding fault everything then we have to get the opportunity to participate whatever we like wherever we like in all the places but we neglect and we able to get access we able to get no still many people uh, even in india or even in other country they don't know what is 4g they never access the 4g then effect what type of effectiveness we need to learn to get something then we need a good transformation this is a very very philosophical thought and distribution of resources we have to distribute the resource those who have more we have to give to others that is very very important for education equity from there i took only one concept in this side that is equitable access to the excellent educator we need for this equalization or equity in education we need a good teacher who can give a human capital management to everybody and who can organizing a professional learning and development for everybody who is the teacher and principal of preparation to pick, become or make us to good educationalist and facial equality those who follow these people we need that person then only we can come out from global inequality in education why i'm focusing global inequality because before we don't know by the government telling to the rules and act and the paper and the news media everywhere your good education globally this university is there this college is there this school is there innovation blah 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 things everything came out as a truth or a fact in just one pandemic the corona virus affect the whole world we came to know what are the defect we have in our life particularly in education this is a small statistics uh, by the end of march 2020 how many percent of world student has impacted by closer to their school and universities 
nearly 87 percentage. 160 countries implement a nationwide shutdown of their educational institutions. Approximately how many students they lacked, how many countries they are started their online learning. So we are telling we are in living in the 21st century. But what is the defect? See, this is the inequality of online education during pandemic. We have a technology. We have everything. See the teacher's condition. See another country. See our country. See some other countries also. What is the difference? In one place, they have a good facilitated classroom to teach online class. Another place, they have a stick to stand with the mobile phone and teaching. In another country, they have a stand and to teach. In other country, they're hanging the mobile phone and teaching. In other country, there are people, they are learning good system to hear what is the teacher is teaching with good, uh, like a software and other things, good facility for internet. The education developed, we are telling, no. It is still developing, under development, because we have a lot of inequality of system and process. Some educational crisis, multi-dimensional impact during the COVID-19 or pandemic. Number one, shortage of necessary funding for the opportunity or sorry, appropriate educational approach to the situation. So we are telling about a shortage of necessary funding. What happened? They spent a lot of money to construct. They are a lot of money to buy these things. Where is the money? Then a lot of dropouts, difficult return to the school because they don't have online facility to access the internet, to see the internet in the mobile phone. What they will do? Then family losses and distress due to economic crisis because they need education, they need proper food, they need to listen, they need a proper place to sit and do everything. They need electricity, they need a society to support. Not enough teachers are teachers not sufficiently trained with the right skill set. Yes, they need to teach in online. Many teachers, truly I'm telling, many teachers, they don't know how to teach in online still now. This is their fault? No. The government or institute, others, we have to give a proper training to them. How to handle it? Even many teachers, they learn something, but they don't know how to utilize. Problem is less experience. Then no equal access and capacity for resources and knowledge to distance learning opportunities. There is a lack of resources where we have to get. Those who got, they are rich people. What about the poor people? If you calculate in the whole world, all are not rich. We have social stratifications. Upper class, upper middle, upper middle class, middle class and the lower class. Many people are poor class. Everything is there. What we have to do to reach the education to them? Then increased pressure on household and families due to economic and relation. Loss of the school enabling to private, sorry, protective environment. There is no connectivity. So it become a very great educational crisis during pandemic. That time only we able to know we are lack in equally giving or getting opportunity to improve global wise education. Even in America, they got it because they have a good facility in all over the school, equipped schools. So they learned to compare the poor country, those who are developed countries. In this pandemic, we came to know, not only the pandemic, due to the global consequence, we came to know something like there is an inequality. So I like to share in the perspectives of teachers, what they think, where is the inequality? They think about teaching methods. What type of methods we are following in teaching? Still many places they are following traditional method. 
i have given some pictures how the 21st century expectation of teaching in different way how they are teaching the same whether they are teaching the same in every world is another reason then course management we are having a fighting which course or which subject is higher think about somebody the science is higher somebody the language language is higher somebody the uh, like uh, arts like history or geography or something like economics which is higher so there is inequality so the course men they don't know to give a equal opportunity then technological knowledge so because all the teachers they are not getting the opportunity to get training then evaluation strategy they are not allowed to do the same or equal evaluation lot of corruption over there lot of system then professional growth they are unable to grow in their profession equally because lot of interference how many seniors they are allowing the juniors to come up if they know others this is another problem we can go many stories with other every teachers those who left or quit the teaching job alone then mental health is a psychological phenomenon every teachers they are in mental health nowadays then employability they are not having assurance to be work continuously <coughs> sorry <coughs> because the employability the management decides now all the education institution not only under the government many thing in the privatization so what they are doing in the privatization what they are doing in the government even government also they are having lack of employability problems still they are not fulfill equal to the ratio of the students to appoint the teachers as per the norms they published already they gave assurance then the knowledge updates we able to get the knowledge updation for uh, uh, from the library or from the globe many teachers they are not doing that's a problem from the student side in their perspective they feel there is a inequality in learning methods yes they are learning in different way one teacher is teaching another one another teacher is teaching another one in the book we are learning another method then academic attainment they are deciding the achievement only in different way not the same then use of technology then the age factor then curriculum approach what type of curriculum you can go to the school particularly for example in india <coughs> they are following like uh, cbse icsc state board matriculation many differences which is applicable for which type of study if you take about i am in iraq here also the british schools separate american schools separate iraq public school is separate then turkian school they separate so they are following different methodology to learn the language to learn these things if you go to everywhere like that then where there is a equality in learning the subject or knowledge the learning atmosphere yes we can see the learning atmosphere of many countries very poor still the students are sitting under the tree and learning the subject it is there not only in africa not only in india not only in malaysia not only in uh, like uh, china everywhere it is because still we never take the education into their level then examination system if you finish even you finish the good exam then we have to go for opportunity another exam another entrance exam another thing another thing when they will get everything i don't know so the students they are thinking there is inequality in this conscious in the world then same time the parents also perspective something they think the system of education which is a correct system for everybody if you learn the person from india the learn the person from iraq the learn the person learning from america the person learning from britain the person learning from uh, like uh, japan when we'll compare together lot of differences why why we are not making globalized system of education 
we are telling the words we are what we are making act we are making agreement blah blah things we are spending money on there but where is the money where is the system the biggest question mark then reservation policy i told and the hazard and lu it has a lot yeah, of ma'am. issue on I mean, ugcl then education sorry economical life because many parents they expect my children or my child to study and he finish and then come for a good job and they will earn and they will balance the economic life of ours uh, like their family but no opportunity to get properly in employment then family atmosphere is another reason they think about there is a inequality some family they are getting good education some family they are not getting good education because they are poor they are rich that is another then unemployment they are feeling more on this which education is suitable for proper employment once we said said if you finish engineering you can get good job where once you finishing uh, like a uh, medicine you can get good job where once you finish for some good subject where everything questioning 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 because no there is no inequality of sharing then social status this is another social problem which affects the inequality consequence in education then future generation they think in the future one day what will happen some society they are perceive these things in equality for example <clears throat> expectation of innovation if one country introduce 5g but the same another country getting 5g after 5 years there is a difference to innovation even getting medicine for during pandemic why we don't have any doctors in our countries they never introduce but the world wise they never agree if one country introduce a medicine only for that country not other country they are making a marketing and business so that they prove they show that inequality then socio stratification level then dark to light yes we can get the light is difficult then social mobility understanding of economy then health care and technology importance because in this slide the picture shows about how much we are following in equality in our life then employer perspectives actually i don't want to talk about this but we have to talk because when we are educators we are educating the people to get a good job and good employment but what happened what the expectation of the employers multiple administration not to only one person doing many people and they are showing their own vigilance in there so it's a lack over there then education and planning even the employee they think different education to different then beyond the business is another big problem in the equity equity concept then giving a employment and social credit they think everything for only social credit they follow the racism they follow gender discrimination they follow many thing so it affects the people's inequality concept in the global wise particularly in education this inequality in education only leads the failure of everything in the world due to this what are the challenges we are facing nowadays or why we are facing this challenge see political leaders they are never change they say telling the word but they never change the uh, preamble of the concept nearly more than 50 years we are following do you know about in history the french revolution they introduced the word liberty fraternity and equality till every country or every world they are following there is equality no there is a liberty no there is a fraternity no we each other fighting how we can expect in education also then environment so we have to face this all circumstances in correct environment 
then every individual life is becoming a challenge because of this then technological challenge then professional who is a profession to do effectively then think about future generation how it will be in another century then think about the researchers every research accepts no many research they are doing simple research not a effective research to show something then mental health and hygiene everybody getting psychologically ill in the world to live without anything during covid 19 millions of students have not be not have been able to continue learning in schools universities occasional training institutions and adult learning programs due to no equal treatment have been given to all in terms of education particularly in the learning concept in the curriculum concept in teaching methods in utilization of technology in classroom like a proper classroom for everybody then even assessment examination and giving equal opportunity and have a good employment so being a good citizen of global nations wherever you are in any country kindly do the needful action to solve the inequality in education around the world because i heard and i forget yes you know you are hearing something one day you will forget or may any time you can forget i see and i believe yes you see here what are the things i am giving you can see and you believe but when i do then only i understand so it's a great thought given by confucius so kindly do something then only you will understand whether we have a good or not finally i like to tell the great words given by our inspirational leader inspirational teacher inspirational scientist none other than dr abj abdul kalam he said education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world so you can change the global world without inequality it should be equal then you can improve the education so there are lot in inequality concept or system process in educational system kindly try to change then we can get a better future in the world thank you thank you for the wonderful opportunity thank you sir uh-huh. thank you for the wonderful session thank you so much for being with us sir um i now request dr prem singh mutbalan sir to introduce dr anuradha ma'am of loyola college department of history ma'am, loyola college will they ask any doubts yeah. oh yes sir sorry just to give for their anybody having doubts, any then... doubts I think no one is coming up, sir. Hello. Yeah. And no There one is, no is coming up, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I, I really thank to the organizing committee and others. Then even my uh, university, they allow me to give a wonderful presentation for you. I'm thank you. I'm thankful for this opportunity. Thank um, you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us, sir. um uh, i request prem uh, sir to introduce anuradha ma'am yes ma'am uh, am i audible to you uh, yes sir you audible uh, okay uh, due to that uh, feeble uh, uh, network condition i am unable to on that video uh, it's my pleasure and privilege to uh, introduce dr d anuradha the head of the department and assistant professor of history loyola college chennai who has strong administrative efficiency program and people management skills uh, she completed her ba history in stella marys college chennai and uh, 
Master of Arts in History in Madras Christian College, then uh, a Bachelor of Education in Lady Willington College, PhD in University of Madras, uh, cleared, also cleared the state level eligibility test for lectureship. On behalf of uh, Bishop Caldwell College, uh, Department of English and History, I welcome you, Madam, for this one day international webinar on gender, war, and memory and interdisciplinary approach. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, welcome you to this session. Thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, I would like to share my screen. Yes, ma'am, I've given you, I made your focus. Okay. Okay. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. A very good evening to one and all gathered here on this virtual platform. I'm very happy to be part of this uh, webinar. Uh, I thank the organizers uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And um, the topic that I would like to talk on today is uh, gender and war. Let me just begin with this quote. To be liberated, women must feel free to be herself, not in rivalry to man, but in the context of her own capacity and her personality. These words resonate a very deep thought on the very nature of liberation of women have to achieve. Liberty to be themselves and achieve what they are capable of. The stereotypes created since time immemorial have always seen women as a weaker part of society who always have to be protected and are not capable of protecting themselves. Despite the diversity of gender and war separately, Gender roles in war are very consistent across all known human societies. Let me go on to the topic. There are some general ideas on war, mostly termed as militarized masculinity. Cultural constructed gender identities enable war. So how does the society view war and warriors. We come to know about them through literature, plays, poems, folklore, ballads. It is generally believed that masculinity is associated with qualities that make good warriors. Always a good functioning army is identified with masculine traits. Fear and combat trauma are pervasive among men in battle, warrior masculinity, force men to endure trauma and master fear in order to claim the status of man. Physical courage, endurance, strength, skill, honor also is a part of course cultural repetition of male socialization. Bravery and discipline are particularly important to fighting fear and entail suppression of emotions. How or what is the status of gender and war? How are men portrayed when war is described? The society at large looks at war as 
not only a, the, sorry, I looked at gender, not only as a social construct, but it also encodes relationships of domination. The society at large accepts gender-based belief system and ideologies. Generally, women are identified as a place, as a, a, a place or objectified, a place to return to, a place to die for, trying to protect it. A protected status. If we go through literature, we see women as witnesses of war, singing men's bravery, as mothers trying to raise men to be brave war warriors, as nurses serving as substitute mothers. So women are usually depicted being very complacent with the role of reproduction of this militarized masculinity. War is not a desirable event. Misery, pain, loss, suffering, all this accompany war. But still we find numerous wars throughout the pages of history. Some with genuine reasons, some for petty issues, and some for sport. But in any case, war always ended with two realities, the victor and the vanquished. In a war, enemy nation were always viewed as feminine. When we think about warfare, our attention turns to men involved, perhaps because it was an invention of men. And thus, the two are inev inevitably associated, but more conceivably, because history largely written for, by, and about men. Thus, we find a similarity in the way defeated nations were treated after all, especially in ancient medieval society. We find the general practice was killing the men of the defeated country or the tribe and carrying their women and children captive. Women treated as objects, counted among the treasures, looted. Women dishonored and treated or uh, uh, forced to, to uh, several miseries after being taken as prisoners. In the Indian context, we come across a practice of johar, where women in large number leapt into a pool of burning fire to keep themselves being captured by the victorious army. These women epitomized feminism, particularly post-colonial feminism before the concepts even existed. They did what they knew they should, could, with no regard what was virtually deemed their place in the society. Now let us uh, travel a little through the pages of history and see what in reality history unravels about the capacity, the capability of women who choose to break the stereotypes and be different and achieve remarkable success. We are focusing only on Indian history, which itself has volumes to speak of great women of valor, role of women in, in war, differed from culture to culture. Let me take you to the pages of history. Role of women in war in ancient Indian history. In the ancient Indian history, we have sources from the Vedas, the Rig Veda especially, where we find a mention of a female warrior, Vishpala, with here Vish meaning settlement and Pala or Bala meaning strong. So it was a strong settlement which was protected by a female warrior. Obviously, we don't have any historical records. They are from literary sources, but still we have mention about it. Then we come to the historical period where we find the reign of Chandragupta Maurya from where the historical period begins. Here we see Maurya, Chandra, the Mauryans had this practice of having women as bodyguards to protect the king. So they were trained, they rode uh, war chariots, horses, elephants, they took part in military campaigns. So we have this uh, very remarkable part of women in the Indian history. And this practice seems to be enforced in the Gupta period, that is from the third century BC till about the sixth century AD. Coming down again, through the pages of history, we move to the medieval part of history. Medieval part of history, we have 
numerous, voluminous uh, women warriors. I will not be able to talk about all of them, but a few of them I would like to list out. We speak of uh, Rani Rudrama Devi. She was a queen of the Kakatiya dynasty in the Deccan Plateau. And uh, one of the very few monarchs to rule uh, India and promote a male image in order to do so. And we find that uh, she uh, married a Chalukya prince, Rudrama Devi. She married a Chalukya prince. And uh, she protected her uh, dynasty, uh, uh, took care of her entire kingdom, even without the support of the king, her husband. Marco Polo, who had visited India sometime around 1289 to 1293 AD, he writes, very flatteringly about Rudrama Devi, how she planned the fortification of her city, the, uh, the uh, military uh, enablements of her uh, city, how well she had done and how she was uh, capable of protecting her city. We find that she uh, faced several challenges from her neighboring kingdoms and she was able uh, to uh, um, uh, defeat the Yadavas the, of Devagri and uh, very brilliantly protected her uh, territory till she had to face dissent from her uh, chieftain under her. Next, a very, very um, interesting personality we come across in the medieval India is Rani Abhaka, very popularly known as Abhaka Mahadevi. She has become a folk legend of Karnataka, belonging to the, the Tulunadu. She was, uh, reigned as the queen of the Tulunadu. She uh, was ruling a princely state called Ulal. And she, nearly 300 years before Rani of Jansi, Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jansi, whom we popularly would have heard, Nearly 300 be years before the Rani of Chansi, we find she gave such a tough resistance to the colonial power of the Portuguese. Sometimes she is also described as the first woman freedom fighter of India because she, for four decades, she kept the Portuguese at bay. The Portuguese were not able to take over her territory for nearly 40 years. She was very, very, very popular. Uh, her uh, uh, legend has become so popular. There are so many uh, stories and um, uh, plays written about her. She is very popularly known for uh, the fire arrow technique which she was practicing, Agni Vana. It, uh, if we, if we learn about this through the folklore, uh, which uh, was written, being a, a Jaina by profession, by her faith, okay, she uh, represented all the communities. Uh, a great source of threat to the Portuguese. They finally had to take uh, help of uh, her enemies to put her down. She even formed alliance with the Zamorin of Calicut and who, uh, who also fought on behalf of her with the Portuguese. Such was a, a tremendous history of a, a ruler in the south part of uh, India uh, who was so brave and so courageous to defend her territory against the Portuguese. Next, uh, we talk about Razia Sultana, who was a, a ruler of the Delhi Sultans, uh, the first female Muslim ruler to have ruled Delhi. She gave up her parda and proved to be an efficient ruler in administering and leading her forces. She was, she was so efficient that she invoked the jealousy of uh, the, the, her own brothers who uh, plotted against her and kill, had her killed. Then we speak about Noor Jahan. Though we don't have any history of Noor Jahan leading any army, but historians describe Noor Jahan as the power behind the throne of Jahangir, the famous Mughal ruler. She was the most prominent empress of this empire. She had coins struck in her name 
and uh, she was also known for her bravery and weapon wielding skills she uh, uh, had had come had uh, such a uh, um, uh, power over the court over the uh, planning of the mughal empire that um, uh, historians have written at length about her we speak about chand bibi chand bibi of ahmednagar has said to have resisted the mughals mughals at the height of their power when they were trying to expand into the southern part of india we find chand bibi the sultan of bijapur who uh, accompanied her uh, husband in many uh, wars in many of the campaigns that he undertook the the mighty sultan adil shah of bijapur chand bibi used to accompany him in his military endeavors and we find that um, even after her uh, the, after uh, chand uh, adil shah had died in a battle fighting against the mughals we find that chand bibi continued uh, the war and bravely defended ahmedabad a very interesting character we find is oneka obawa oneka obawa was no ruler but she was one woman warrior who very very brilliantly protected chitradurga from the troops of hyder and she was the wife of a soldier who was very very uh, prudent very shrewd at the same time very very brave enough to kill armed soldiers with a pestle because they were coming in through a, a, a very uh, narrow and she waited there and one by one she started to kill the soldiers of hyder ali troop and defend the fort of chitra like this we have several several uh, um, examples we find the example of rani padmini rani padmini who uh, very bravely defended chitto uh, her uh, rule her husband the king the ruler of chitto ratan sen who was uh, fighting with alauddin khilji one of the most powerful rulers of the khilji dynasty and when ratan sen had lost the battle and died in the battle we find padmini along with the women of the uh, the of the chittur performing what we call as the johar which i told you in the beginning of the, uh, the session about a practice called uh, johar which is self immolation which women of uh, the period used to practice to protect their honor in in order to save themselves from being captured and taken as slaves to the enemy territory they performed this practice of uh, self immolation where women lit a very huge fire and jumped into the fire we have example of rani karnavati karnavati is uh, uh, the ruler of garhwal and we find that uh, she very bravely defended her territory from the mughal ruler shah jahan she was um, uh, brave enough to uh, even uh, force the mughal troops who had come to fight and take over garhwal garhwal was known as a very rich state at the time and uh, shah jahan wanted to invade those uh, states of Gar uh, garhwal and make them as his own territory we find uh, rani karnavati who caught hold of the soldiers and practiced a very humiliating practice so that the mughals will never even dream of coming to garhwal again or cutting the noses of the um, uh, soldiers the mughal soldiers who uh, came to take over the uh, garhwal she is very famously known as uh, nakati rani nakati rani is uh, the king who cuts off the nose we find uh, the next um, uh, example i would like to talk to you about is of uh, tarabai bosle tarabai bosle is a ruler of uh, uh the the maratha the maratha territory and we find charabai defending the maratha territory 
uh, when unfortunately Raja Ram Bosle uh, dies or uh, her husband dies and we find that Tarabai is left with uh, no other choice but to defend her territory and uh, protect herself and her son. We find Tarabai taking on uh, the territory uh, on the Mughals and protecting fiercely her territory. And the next example, probably everybody has heard of the story of Rani Lakshmi Yes, is uh, anybody talking? I think that uh, Dr. Jodi, who is disturbing. Someone's mic is on, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, 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 it's off. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, probably everyone has heard of uh, Rani Lakshmi Bai. And um, we have heard of how brave and how valiant she was when she fought the, the first war of independence. She was extremely fearless and determined to protect her motherland that uh, she has inspired many. After the death of her son and of her husband, she never let the British annex her kingdom. She fought with all her might. But finally, she lost her life in uh, uh, fighting the war. Several examples we have like this of uh, women who took part in the 1857 rebellion. One very brilliant example we have is of Udha Devi. Udha Devi was famously known as the female sniper. She was, uh, uh, come, she hailed from a very small village, a uh, very uh, backward, a very remote village. But uh, seeing the anger against the British during the 1857 rebellion, she enrolled herself uh, in uh, Begum Hazrat Mahal's uh, uh, troop. And Begum Hazrat Mahal, who was also one of the brave leaders of the 1857 uh, rebellion, helped her to form her own uh, troop called as the Viranganis. And we find Udha Devi is uh, commended for her art of a very, very uh, brave sniper. With her art of being a very brave sniper, we find she was able to kill thousands of British soldiers who were uh, uh, again, uh, who are fighting against the 87 uh, 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 leaders. Then we have Mahabri Devi who formed female resistance units. We have a, 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 a separate women unit formed by Rani Lakshmi Bai called as the Durka Dal. And the list goes on and on. We have Asha Devi, Bakhari, Habiba, Bhagati Devi. So many women warriors we have who laid their lives in the 1857 rebel. When we look at all this, we find that there is very little representation about them in history. When we talk about uh, uh, the wars, the, the dynasties, the rebellions, we give more prominence to kings, to uh, leaders who, uh, who have done a lot of contributions, but we very generally find the names of women missing out of many of this text. When we come to the South, we have a very, very beautiful example of Rani Velunachya, who belonged to the Sedupati dynasty of uh, 18th century. She belonged, uh, uh, she was trained in the art of warfare, martial arts. She had her own army of women called the Udhayat. And she was also the first Indian queen to wage a war against the East India Company. Very fondly, she is remembered as uh, Veera Mangai. And then we move ahead, we see Rani Mangamal, Rani Bellavadi Mallama, Kitu Rani Chennama, Rani Keladi Chennama of Keladi, 
all these were people who very bravely defended their territories when uh, they were called upon to do so. They, they did not hesitate, they did not uh, shun away or they did not lose hope. They fought till their last, till their last breath and uh, tried to save their kingdom from becoming uh, a, a slave to the, the victorious uh, rulers. And we find uh, the, the uh, mention about Rani Mangamal as a visionary queen of Madurai. And uh, she faced threat from the, the Mughals and uh, she very bravely she fought against the Mughals, but finally she had to lose uh, uh, to Raghunath Sedhupati. Then we have uh, the example of uh, Velavadi Mallama who fought against Chhatrapati Shivaji and who uh, even who was um, uh, uh, regarded by Shivaji as a, a very brave warrior. Uh, similarly, we I, as I spoke to you about uh, Kitur Rani Chennama and Kiladi uh, Chennama. Coming to a more recent context, we find the example of a, a very, very brave leader, just give me a moment, okay. um, uh, Lakshmi Segal. Lakshmi Segal was a very inspiring woman known as, very popularly as Captain Lakshmi. She went on to form a special division in the INA, the Indian National Army, which was led by Shubhas Chandra Bose. And that, uh, led, that regiment was called as uh, Rani of Jansi Regiment. She actively fought against the Britishers in India and also was put to arrest when she was in Burma. And uh, she has inspired generations of women all across the world. Such is uh, the, the, the contribution of women, the, the valor that women have had throughout the pages of history. Now we have seen from the ancient period to the medieval period coming to the modern time, how women at many occasions, I have just given you a very few examples. They were women who wanted to break the stereotypes, who wanted to uh, prove themselves, who wanted to prove to the world that they were also capable, they were also efficient and they were also uh, skilled in this art of warfare, in the art of planning, in the art of execution. All these women were also capable of doing. Lastly, I would like to highlight about uh, a very, very inspiring personality of modern times, our own Prime Minister, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, very famous for many, many uh, of her contributions to India and also very famous for uh, her bravery, her courage. I would like to remember her for the Bangladesh Liberation War. Indira Gandhi, the third Prime Minister of India and the only woman Prime Minister of India, came to her uh, position in 1966, one of the most fearless Prime Ministers of this nation. and. She decided to go into this war, not only for India, but for her neighboring country, for our neighboring country, which uh, was fighting for its independence. In 1971, when she had been re-elected to power, she decided to give a very, very bold and daring support to the people of uh, the then East Pakistan and liberate them and form what was called as a Bangladesh. This war also made her very popular among the masses. You would have uh, come across this map, a very old map, which uh, shows you West Pakistan and East Pakistan. So when we had the partition of India, Pakistan, which was uh, separated from India was in two uh, pieces. One was on the western side and one was eastern side. And in between, we had what is India. So on the western side, we had uh, Sindh, Baluchistan and uh, uh, Punjab. And uh, uh, East Pakistan is what was East Bengal because we had West Bengal. East Pakistan was called as e the East Bengal territory. Now, geographically, they were separated by Indian soil in between. But 
there was nothing in common between west pakistan and east pakistan everything was different their language their culture their custom everything was dif different and they had very difficult time getting together because the administration was always wielded by west pakistan all the military bureaucracy business trade everything was always in the hands of west pakistan and east pakistan which is uh, today's bangladesh always felt rejected they felt that they did not get uh, their even uh, share of rights and uh, their even share of uh, uh, power when it came to administration or military or bureaucracy now we find uh, that uh, sorry yeah we find that uh, the uh, in 1971 uh, there was a election which was conducted for pakistan together that is east and west together and uh, yaha khan who was the ruler of west pakistan who was a very powerful uh, person of west pakistan he had called for this election believing that uh, he will again win this election but uh, we find a very major change coming up when Awami League wins the election in East Pakistan and Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, he wins almost 99% of the seats. This forces the Pakistani leadership to become very resistant against uh, the people of East Pakistan and uh, resist the, the election victory and stop them from forming their government. Now, when they were met with such a resistance, the people of East Pakistan decided that uh, they wanted to be separate. They wanted to form their own government and they wanted to separate away from this Pakistan. And that became more uh, strong when West Pakistan organized what was called as the Operation Searchlight on East Pakistan. Searchlight was a very, very, um, uh, what you can be, you can call it a violent operation where a massacre in hundreds and thousands was uh, taking place in uh, East Pakistan. The prominent political leaders, writers, journalists, people who were uh, supporting the idea of uh, a separate uh, Bangladesh, students, student leaders, everybody were targeted, attacked, and they were killed. This led to a very serious crisis. And what was that serious crisis? We had huge influx of refugees coming into the Indian territory. Now, this was a question which India also had to answer because India had to provide for just yeah, India had to provide for all these refugees who are coming in numbers of uh, hundreds and thousands every day. We find that uh, India uh, even carried out negotiations with Pakistan to make conditions for the re return of these refugees, but that never occurred. Then we find by 1971, India had decided to uh be ready for what was uh, going to be uh, the bangladesh uh, liberation war and in this liberation war we find indira gandhi leading in the forefront she gave autonomy educated autonomy to the defense heads and she along with the defense heads planned what will be aggressive strategy and defense strategy for the Indian army. Aggressive strategy on Eastern Front, that is on the Bangladesh Front, and defensive strategy on the Western Front, that is the Pakistan Front. The war raged on only for 13 days, and Pakistan, we find, um, uh, was very prepared for the war, she was uh, uh, getting support from other countries from outside in uh, uh, fighting the war with uh, uh, India. Though India had asked for support to many countries, we find uh, every country said that what is happening in Bangladesh is wrong, but nobody was ready to stop uh, Pakistan from doing anything in Bangladesh. Then we find that Indira Gandhi took a very strong decision and announced in the parliament that we are going to fight the war. She made the statement in the parliament, war has been forced on us. And uh, the, the war, which I, as I told you, dragged on for 
about 13 days resulted in the Indian victory. I'm not going into the nuances of the war. It's a very beautiful uh, war which took place. If you have time, you can just read about the strategies which the Indian army followed in this war and very uh, uh, gloriously led India into the victory. 1971 war brought great moments of glory for the Prime Minister India, Indira Gandhi and also India. Many political leaders, they termed Indra as goddess. Even her opponents, people who were in the opposition, our uh, former prime minister at that time, the uh, veteran of the BJP, in particular, he termed her as goddess Durga. These are some examples which I have quoted, I have unfolded before you about how women are capable of leading from the front. I began with uh, the idea which is generally prevalent in the society about the masculinity of war. War is always uh, warriors. When you think of warriors, you think of uh, a brave man. And very rarely we come across uh, women portrayed as brave warriors. And very sadly, we find many of their names missing from the pages of history. And it is uh, really a uh, high time that we start uh, rewriting history with uh, prominence to the services, to the contribution, to the sacrifice rendered by so many multitude of women. I have only covered uh, uh, but a few examples and that only from Indian history. If we were to look at the history of all the countries in the world, we, we will have numerous uh, uh, examples to quote of the bravery that women uh, can uh, showcase. Thus, uh, history unravels numerous undaunted women at war, their grit, their resilience, their policies, determination, vision have always uh, made themselves uh, uh, proud to be courageous and uh, men who are contemporary to them take a back seat. So in today's context, women have reached astounding heights by their mere merit and courage. Let's together appreciate the bravery and, and courage of women and their leadership. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions? You can post in the chat box. Um, shall I ask one thing uh, to you? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, it's, it's a, actually, it's a wonderful uh, presentation Thank with you. the mighty maps of uh, the Indian sub subcontinent. Uh, the women are uh, not less than men. Uh, actually, uh, from your uh, findings and uh, your uh, lecture about the excellence of uh, women, uh, it is very wonderful. Uh, what, just I want to know that uh, when a man behind a woman, actually, when uh, the man who is not in a position of his throne or seat, after that only, the responsibility is goes to the, the women. Uh, these uh, they have some uh, uh, they have to uh, they have such kind of force there is no other way uh, in that such condition only the women are uh, show their mighty uh, mightiest uh, are uh, they they proven that uh, they are very uh, strong equal to the women uh, what about that for example when uh, nehru was died Indira Gandhi emerged as a wonderful uh, personality. Likewise, uh, Jansi, Jansi Rani, who also, when uh, her husband died, uh, he entered into the uh, uh, local politics or the Indian uh, freedom struggle. It was later called like that only. So, what is your uh, uh, opinion about that? Just uh, It is a clarification, not a question. Yes, sir. 
Thank so you. thank you for this um, uh, idea that you have posted. Uh, uh, women, uh, as you told very clearly, that only after they have been pushed to such a situation where they have to take up the leadership and they have to move ahead. Why is this situation is mainly because we come from a patriarchal society. In a patriarchal society, we generally expect the son to succeed the father. And only in the case when the king or the, the, the ruler has lost his position or is not in a position to fight for his country, we find that the queen steps in. Because uh, generally, the, the mindset of the people, the, the, the mindset of the court, the nobles, the people who are surrounding the king, they will not accept the orders from a woman. That is the, the main hindrance for women to come to the throne. They will not take up the order from a woman because that is how the, the uh, society was made to believe that uh, a woman is not in a position to give an order or a command. So we find it, uh, the, these examples that we have seen are examples which are out of the ordinary. We cannot find these examples uh, in many numbers because generally uh, after a king dies, only his son can succeed. Only the case when uh, the son is of a very young age or the, the king doesn't have a son, the queen will have somebody else on the throne and will rule as the regent. Most of the cases, these queens have not been um, directly recognized as the queen. They only are recognized as the queen regent that is ruling in the place of a person. This is uh, because of the patriarchal bent of mind our society is in. Not only our society, most of the ancient medieval society have this patriarchal uh, mindset where uh, women are not uh, seen in the position of giving a command. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That uh, uh, is very good. Uh, so, so, if the opportunity is given to them, they have all the potential to do that. That is the yes. uh, thesis. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for being with us. And that was a wonderful session, ma'am. Um, thank you so much, uh, ma'am. Uh, you know, uh, out of your, you know, it's the very first time we are collaborating with Department of History, and um, uh, in Department of English. You know, we also learn history of English literature, Indian history of Indian literature, all that. And um, and uh, when we talk about, you know, when we talk about what that has been more what we learn in history as well. Um, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for being with us. And that was a wonderful presentation. We're talking about, you know, the strength of women and motivating us in this world where um, at few times, you know, with many of them were presenting about this gender inequality where you have... Uh, you have given a thrust on where women have to be a pillar by quoting Indra Gandhi. Thank you so much, ma'am, and thank you for being with us. And uh, hope you would be supporting us in the future as well. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. And, thank you, um, Rusty. Thank uh, you for this wonderful opportunity. I really enjoyed. Uh, ma'am, I have to say thank you. <laughs> Apart from you being to France and all the, you know, you gave us time. Thank you so much, ma'am. Oh, Ma'am, sir, sir. Personally, personally, on behalf of uh, BCC, I especially thank to uh, the head of the department, uh, uh, Miss Christina Pauline. Uh, without her, it is not possible. Uh, it is thank actually you, Prem, sir. thanks to her. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Anuradha, ma'am, hope you would be coming to a college one day. And <laughs> you would be welcome. You know, for the Department of History, would be very much honored to have you with us, ma'am. Once definitely. the COVID set rights, you please do visit our college. Definitely, definitely. I'll uh, enjoy coming there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Prem, sir, thank you so much. Uh, at this juncture, I would like to thank um, Nageshwari, ma'am, the head of the Department of History, uh, for uh, collaborating with the Department of English. And I also like to thank 
uh, the people who have uh, you know the department you know, apart from department of english the staff of department of history as well were here working with us throughout today morning we had a tough time and prem sir thank you so much for helping me uh, to have uh, to, ses- to chair the session and dr sulochana for helping us with all the work and nageshri ma'am for uh, helping us to chair uh, helping all the chair for people thank you so much uh, sir because without you people we cannot do this uh, conference thank you so much thank you one and all and the feedback is there please do have feedback and the feedback will be please don't share the feedback among your friends uh, hardly we had 100 to 110 um we had a uh, participants uh, please don't share the feedback among your groups so i'm not posting it in the group only here i'm posting it here uh, please you now we had to have some etiquette please do follow that uh, because for future uh, so we are not generating the uh, few, uh, certificates today so we would be verifying it with the registration and then we would be issuing the certificates it would be coming to your email and for paper presentation as well those who have done the feedback those who have only presented will be getting the certificates thank you thank you one and all any any uh, questions we have given a group to join for further assistance for anything and uh, you can call us any time thank you thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you all